Before watching this video, make sure you know the definitions of a system, internal force, external force, and net external force, how to draw free body diagrams, and how to apply Newton's first and second laws of motion. As we mentioned previously, there are many ways to express Newton's three laws of motion. The most popular version of Newton's third law states, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. For example, when you push an object 20 newtons right, the object pushes back with a force of 20 newtons left. These forces are an action-reaction pair, or a Newton's third law pair. If we want to be more descriptive, we would mention action force and reaction force, because Newton's third law only applies to forces. Furthermore, the phrase equal and opposite is an abbreviation for the forces being equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. If you are asked to define this in an exam, both the short and long version will get you full marks. Newton's third law can also be expressed as an equation. Here, FAB is the force that object A exerts on object B, while FBA is the force that object B exerts on object A. The equal sign reminds us that the forces have equal magnitudes, while the minus sign indicates that they point in opposite directions. Previously, we defined a force as an interaction between two objects, which is felt as a push or pull. Newton's third law tells us that when an interaction occurs, both objects are affected to the same extent, reflecting a fundamental symmetry in the universe. If you recall, a contact force involves objects that are touching, while a field force can act at a distance. Newton's third law applies to all forces, regardless of the distance between the objects. Previously, the infamous Carmen struck the Anthropology and Archaeology Museum. Now, Mark lingers in front of the cinema, waiting for the others to return. He is alerted by an urgent call for assistance, along with a live stream of the crime in progress. But upon sighting Carmen, he reels in horror and the phone slips out of his hand. His mind is flooded with painful flashbacks of she who controls Carmen, of she who conquered and shamed him, and she who sowed the seeds of doubt that Vector Man is a hero. Let's stop here to consider Mark's phone. It accelerates down because there is an unbalanced weight force of two newtons down. This weight force is caused by an interaction between the earth and phone because both objects have mass. Newton's third law tells us that when an interaction occurs, both objects are affected. Therefore, the Earth experiences a force that is equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. These two forces form an action-reaction pair. Now, it is technically correct to say that the Earth falls up towards the phone. But in reality, the Earth moves an incredibly small distance, smaller than the width of an atom, so we never actually see the Earth moving. The apparent differences in the motion of the Earth and phone are caused by the enormous differences in their masses, but we'll cover this in another video. It's time to discuss the rules for identifying action-reaction pairs. Firstly, both forces must be the same type. In the previous example, we identified two weight forces, so they form a valid pair. On the other hand, the normal force and friction do not make a pair. Furthermore, an action-reaction pair only exists between the same two objects, 
In this example, the phone interacts with Earth, so it is a valid pair. If one interaction is between a person and a brick wall, but the other involves the ground, then it is not a pair. Lotus returns with the tickets, but her excitement switches into steadfast resolve as she too recognises the fugitive. She urges Vector Man to pull himself together and be a hero. The police need help. It's his duty to respond. After what seems like an eternity, the living statue breaks his pose, but only to slump into a chair and complain about butterflies in his stomach. Lotus offers some pain relief, then reminds Vector Man that criminals like Carmen cannot be allowed to roam freely. At this point, Ian steps in to defend Mark. He's obviously under the weather, so he should sit this one out. Mark's main priority should be relaxing, drinking his smoothie and looking out for number one. Let's stop here to identify the action-reaction pairs associated with the smoothie. Gravity pulls with a force of six newtons down, and the table pushes with a normal force of six newtons up. They are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Now listen closely, because the next part is important. This is not an action-reaction pair. As we mentioned earlier, the forces in an action-reaction pair must be the same type and involve the same two objects. The weight force occurs when the earth interacts with the smoothie, but the normal force occurs when the table interacts with the smoothie. This cannot be an action-reaction pair because the forces are different and because they involve three objects. This goes to show that if two forces are equal and opposite, they do not necessarily form an action-reaction pair. In this scenario, the weight and normal forces cancel out, allowing the smoothie to remain at rest in a state of static equilibrium. Now, let's try the question again. The first interaction is between the smoothie and earth. The earth pulls the smoothie down and the smoothie pulls the earth up. The smoothie and table form a different pair. The second half of the story is that the table pushes the smoothie up, and the first half is that the smoothie pushes the table down. Overall, we have one pair of weight forces and another pair of normal forces. Lotus makes a final emotional appeal, but the boys are engrossed in their own sphere of selective hearing. Left with no other choice, she stomps back to her car. Lotus slams on the accelerator and resolves to handle the situation herself. This time, our task is to identify all of the action-reaction pairs associated with an accelerating car. Pause the video to try this question by yourself. Firstly, weight is the attraction between two masses. The earth pulls the car down and the car pulls the earth up. Secondly, the normal force stops solid objects from passing through each other. The car pushes down against the road and the road pushes up against the car. Drag occurs when an object moves through a liquid or gas. The car pushes the air in front of it and the air pushes back against the car. Rolling resistance occurs when an object rolls over a surface. The ground pushes the car left to make it slow down, while the car pushes the ground right. Finally, a driving force allows the car to accelerate right. By Newton's third law, there is a reaction force that points left. Now, listen closely, because this is where things get confusing. Many people believe that the driving force is caused by the engine 
so the engine pushes the car right. But this statement is incorrect. Firstly, let's identify the flaws in this reasoning. If the engine really pushes the car right, then the chassis will move right while the engine goes left. Clearly, this cannot happen because both objects are attached to each other. Furthermore, all forces between the engine and chassis are internal forces, as they are both components of the car. As we explained in previous videos, internal forces never cause acceleration. It can only accelerate forwards if there is a net external force caused by something outside the car. The true cause of the driving force is friction between the tyres and ground. When the engine spins the wheels, the tyres push left, against the ground. By Newton's third law, the ground pushes right against the tyres. To further demonstrate the importance of friction, let's imagine a car in the middle of a frozen lake. When Lotus presses the accelerator, the tyres spin furiously but the car remains in the same spot because there isn't any grip. As we can see, a car cannot move if there isn't any friction. To summarise, friction isn't always bad. Depending on the context, it enables objects to speed up or slow down. This image summarises all of the action-reaction pairs that we discussed. Half of these are forces that the car exerts on its environment. The other half are external forces that the environment exerts on the car. When blinding lights illuminate the solitary sleuth and all possible exits, the field sergeant proclaims that Carmen is surrounded. But she doesn't have any plans to surrender she wrenches a sword from the iron grip of a statue, thrusts it at a window, and watches the shards scatter across the tiles. The methodical crunching of glass follows Carmen onto the balcony. She takes a deep breath and leaps into the air. Lotus arrives with just enough time to glimpse the eel slithering into the abyss. Let's rewind to the scene where Carmen shattered the window. Pause the video to read this question for yourself and think about your answer. The answer to this question might seem obvious, but we're going to approach this in a roundabout way. First, let's suppose that the glass has a strength of 100 newtons. Therefore, it can withstand any applied force that is less than or equal to 100 newtons. But if a force of 101 newtons is applied, then it will shatter. Next, let's consider a simple scenario where the applied force is 5 newtons right. This isn't enough to break the glass, so everything remains at rest, in a state of static equilibrium. That's because the window pushes back against the sword with a force of 5 newtons left. Furthermore, both of these are normal forces because the sword and window do not pass through each other. Overall, these forces form an action-reaction pair because they act between the same two objects and they are the same type of force. Now, let's increase the applied force to 500 newtons right. The force is so large that the window shatters into multiple shards. Just like before, the normal force prevents the sword and glass from passing through each other. Therefore, the glass shard does exert some force against the sword. These are the same type of force, and they act between the same two objects, so they are an action-reaction pair. By Newton's third law, they have equal magnitudes and opposite directions. The correct answer is A. Hold on a moment. This can't be right. Wouldn't it make sense for the window to push back with a smaller force of 100 newtons left, since 
that's the breaking strength of the glass? Here's the thing. Newton's third law is always true, regardless of whether an object accelerates and regardless of whether an object breaks. To summarise, both objects feel the same magnitude force, even though one comes off worse than the other. Additionally, the strength refers to the forces holding the glass molecules together. This is unrelated to the forces between the glass and the sword. When the sword pushes 500 newtons right, 100 newtons is used to break the chemical bonds in the glass, and the remaining 400 newtons is used to accelerate the glass shard. Before finishing, let's consider the statement the action is Carmen pushes the sword into the window, and the reaction is the window breaks. This statement is incorrect because Newton's third law does not apply to events and causality. Instead, it only describes the forces acting between two objects at some instant in time. Let's revise what we've covered in this lesson. Newton's third law tells us that when two objects interact, two forces are produced. They are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. An action-reaction pair involves two forces of the same type acting between the same two objects. A car's engine turns the wheels and pushes the ground backwards. By Newton's third law, the ground pushes the car forwards, allowing the car to accelerate. Newton's third law is always true, even if an object accelerates or breaks. However, it cannot be used to describe causality or cause and effect relationships. If two forces have the same magnitudes but opposite directions, it does not guarantee that they form an action-reaction pair. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.